Yeah, and welcome live to the studio. You're here at Triple H 100.1 FM. My name is Alexi Boyd, host of Small Biz Matters, into our sixth year now here at your local community radio station. We're very proud to have been broadcasting for so long and very pleased to be supported by local community radio. Now, I was lucky enough to be invited to the launch of a new program that's being run out, launched by the Australian Small Business Family Enterprise Ombudsman, or as Biffio, as they like to call themselves, Kate Carnell, as well as Peter Langham, who's the CEO of Scottish Pacific. Now, what's interesting about this is that Scottish Pacific um, had been running these reports on small business insights and small business funding, in particular in the finance area, for a number of years. And they were coming up with some really interesting data, being one of the leading organisations that supports small business with small business funding. Kate Carnell, uh, Kate Carnell's office got hold of this information and recognised it as actually quite a useful piece of research. And they've partnered together to produce what's called a Fits Me Guide to Small Business Funding. And I I have to highly recommend this. If you um, have got a great relationship with your financial advisor or your accountant or your bookkeeper, ask them to get you a copy of this. You can, of course, go to the ASBFEO, that's A-S-B-F-E-O.gov.au, which is the Ombudsman's website, and download a copy. It's all about making your business financially fit. Now, we talk a lot on the program about knowing your numbers and being in control of your finances and understanding where your business is at and recognising things like a P&L. Now, that is one aspect and very, very important and crucial for every business success. What we don't often talk about is what that means for small business funding. And it's not necessarily that you're a startup who needs investors or angel people in your life to suddenly grow. Lots of small businesses out there need funding for perhaps an extension or an expansion of the business. You're recognising that you need to update um, perhaps if you're in retail or you need to expand if you're in uh, hospitality and you've, you've got the opportunity to get bigger. Or perhaps you're experiencing some cash flow issues. Now, all of those things are a reason why you would access small business funding. This guide is not necessarily a, a guide on what is out there about what options you have. It's more of, of a, a, I guess, a piece of um, research and equipment for your business so you understand what it means to be financially fit. What does it mean to find a good accountant? What sort of questions should you be asking when you're, when you're getting hold of um, these people to support you and these advisors? And of course, it's got a fantastic checklist on how to become financially organised and financially fit, ready for the purpose of funding. There's also um, uh, preparing uh, a business plan. Now, It seems a little bit archaic. It's sort of about 10 or 15 years ago where people were writing out these five, six, seven page documents that really didn't go anywhere except to go to the bank. But it's a good idea to just think of your five, 10 year plan and to actually get it down on paper. It doesn't need to be such a formal document anymore. There's also about understanding your credit worthiness and, and, you know, talking to people like Credit to Watch or a bunch of other people who... uh, organisations that can support you to understand what your worthiness is from the bank's perspective or from the funding's perspective. And there's also whether or not you even need funding. You know, is, is it appropriate for your position in in, uh, in your business journey right now to actually be accessing funding? There's also a fantastic funding decision flow chart. It's whether or not you're looking to borrow or secure investment at the moment and what you need to have prepared and then what the process is um, and how the decisions are made about your business and whether or not you can access funding. Look, it's a really fantastic document. It's very easy to digest. It's got lots of places you can go to for help. And it's also very supportive of the financial financial services community who, of course, are crucial to help you with getting these decisions made. So when I went to the launch of this particular, um, uh, I guess, guide, uh, I went along to Scottish Pacific offices and spoke to Kate Carnell, who is, of course, the Australian Small Business Family Enterprise Ombudsman. And I also spoke to um, uh, Peter Langham, who is the CEO of Scottish Pacific, and uh, Lalette Kalasia, who is a well-known, fantastic speaker on behalf of the small business bookkeeping, but also the small business community, understanding the day-to-day um, difficulties that small businesses face. I spoke to each of them about the guide, how they believe that it's going to support small businesses, and um, and whether or not it's going to um, make a difference in the world of small business funding. Here's the interview with Kate Carnell to begin with. Welcome to Small Biz Matters. We are at the Scottish Pacific uh, headquarters here in Sydney talking to Kate Carnell, who is, of course, the Australian Small Business and Family Enterprise Ombudsman. Thank you for joining us here at Small Biz Matters, Kate. Look, it's absolute pleasure and on a day when it's exciting to be able to launch a 
a new um, capacity or a new piece of information for accountants, bookkeepers, brokers and small business owners to help them know what's available in terms of access to, to capital for small businesses, something that many small businesses are struggling with. Of course, we've heard a lot about um, the access to capital with all the, um, you know, the recent Royal Commission into the banking sector. Uh, do you think that this will help to improve small businesses' ability to access finance and maybe the parameters under which they have to access it? Do you see this being a practical solution to that or part of the solution? The, the point of, the, of these guides are twofold. One is to identify the sorts of um, capital that's around both debt and equity uh, capital, so the sort of products that are out there, um, then it uses scenarios to determine what sort of um, funding or what sort of situations that particular sorts of, uh, of funding are most appropriate for, so what works, what doesn't work, those sorts of things. And the second bit of this is about helping small businesses to become finance fit. In other words, have their businesses ready to apply for um, for financing or for, for capital. Um, because so many small businesses tell us, oh, well, we gave them our income tax return, surely that would work. Well, no, <laughs> it doesn't work. So there's, there's some good checklists, some good information about the sorts of things you need to do in your small business to be um, ready to apply so that you're more likely to be approved. It sounds like a great uh, checklist. I noticed that at the back of it there's actually a checklist there to help you understand what financially fit means. Yes. Why have you partnered with, in particular, Scottish Pacific about this? What, what aligned you to their, um, I guess, their, their, the things that they're doing to help small business? Um, Scottish Pacific do a twice yearly um, SME uh, um, document where they do a lot of research around looking at cash flow, the sorts of issues that are affecting small business. And they particularly did one last year where they looked at access to, to finance in terms of, you know, and, and also payment times. We thought those were issues that we really care about. So we um, approached them actually at a similar time that they were thinking about talking to us. Uh, and we found that there was uh, a mutual interest in putting out a document like this. I mean, we obviously said to Scottish Pacific, you know, you can't flog your own product through this, and they were quite comfortable about that, that this is quite generic. Um, it's, it's not about um, selling one company um, over another. It's about types of, uh, of finance. Uh, so it was, a, it was a bit of a, you know, appropriate marriage, shall we say, between the two of us. Now, the other thing I noticed that you were talking about was the alignment with professional associations such as accountants and bookkeepers and financial advisors. Why do you think they are such an important part of this criteria? Look, most small businesses um, use financial advisors. In fact, we encourage them desperately to, to do so. Uh, small businesses that believe they can do it themselves are usually um, end up hitting some pretty big brick walls. So um, we think um, financial advisors, advisors generally, are fundamental to the success of small business. Often that is, um, often that's bookkeepers, um, you know, accountants possibly less regularly. Um, when you're looking for a, for a loan, brokers are becoming more and more important in this area as loans are becoming harder to get. So uh, trying to bring the financial advisors that small businesses rely on um, into the mix on this, asking for their advice on what should be in here and, uh, and maybe what shouldn't, um, has been pretty fundamental. So this is not just Scottish Pacific and us, it's a whole range of people have had input here. And what are you hoping that these organisations will do? Will they disseminate this information to their clients or are they going to use it in their, um, I guess, their PR material to show that they're, they know about the, this aspect of small business? Look, I hope what they use it for is to help their small business um, customers understand the space. Uh, and so they use it both for their own information uh, on you know, what exists out there because, fascinatingly, a lot of even accountants really don't know the breadth of products that are, that are in the marketplace, possibly because they haven't had to um, in the past. The banks have, you know, have produced the goods. The banks aren't producing the goods now, so understanding the breadth of products, which also are, incre are changing quite quickly. We know how quickly the fintechs have grown over the last, the last couple of years. Fintech loans can be really good for small business. 
and really bad if they're the wrong loan. You know, if you're after a long-term loan, a fintech on the whole may not be the best option uh, um, for you. So this is about helping both financial advisors and small businesses understanding what the appropriate loan or the appropriate source of funding is for them and for their needs at that time. Well, I think it's a fantastic document. It's really exciting to see that you're supporting that and supporting small business in general about being financially aware and understanding what their limitations are as well as what they can expect from um, the finance providers. Um, thank you very much for joining us here on Small Biz Matters. Where can people find out more information about this, uh, this um, uh, annou uh, sorry, announcement? Look, the documents will be on our website, um, well, are on our website, so they're available to financial advisors, uh, to small business owners as well. Now, we call it a dynamic document because we don't for a moment believe we've, uh, we've captured all the different products that might be out there or all the different um, information that might be needed. So we'll be uh, taking input for the next couple of months to put together a final, which will certainly be done by the end of the year, but the document in its current form is absolutely usable. It's just that we actually don't believe that we've probably got it totally right yet and we want to be able to up Date, uh, updated as necessary. Well, that's fantastic, Kate. Just like small business, you are being very uh, malleable and flexible with your arrangements. Flexibility is what it's all about. <laughs> it's the Fits Me Essential Guide to Business Funding put out by Scottish Pacific, the Australian Government and the Australian Small Business and Family Enterprise Ombudsman, Kate Carnell. Thank you for joining Small Biz Matters with Alexi Boyd. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to Small Biz Matters. Uh, we are in the room with Peter Langham from Scottish Pacific. You are, of course, the CEO. Thank you for joining us today. My pleasure. Thank you. Now, this is a really exciting announcement that you've partnered with the um, Australian Family, no, Australian Small Business and Family Enterprise Ombudsman, Kate Carnell's office. Why are you so passionate about supporting small business and helping them become financially fit so that they can grow? Uh, I think there's probably two questions there. One is why we're we passionate about helping small business, and then the other, the second one is the, the fit piece. I think in terms of why we're passionate, because we see it firsthand. Um, when I was in accounting, I'd see business owners flogging themselves to death, going on holiday and then being sick because their body just shut down. Um, then when I went into finance and you're funding businesses and you see the challenges they go through every day um, and you know how hard they work. Um, and so they're just great people um, and it's very tough for them. I started my own business 22 years ago, 21, 22 years ago. My wife started her own business sort of 12 years ago. And certainly I, I was told it was a lonely place and it's going to be hard work and it is a very lonely place. You can't, you've got very few places to go to, to sort of a shoulder to cry on because you're supposed to be the business owner and founder. Um, and so it's, it's lonely for these people, but they're just really resilient. They work hard. They put their body and soul into something. And the success stories that we have uh, are so, so good and being able to help people is great fun. So just love small business owners. So this uh, came on the back of a couple of reports that you did and analysis of the market with relation to small business and finance and cash flow and, and the struggles that we, we live every day. Um, is that as a result of those reports that this came out, what, what led you to align with um, Kate Carnell's office? Well, for almost five years, we've been producing the Scottish Pacific Small Business Growth Index, and we would ask people questions about their business, how fast they're growing, what issues come to mind, and we would do that three times a year. Um, Kate and her team liked what they saw from that. We started talking to them, and certainly, I think Kate and I hit it off in terms of the passion to help small business owners. Um, and, you know, I'm probably frustrated the government don't do enough um, in helping them because it's more about awareness than anything else. There are lots of solutions out there to help small business people, but it's trying to find them. And you know, I think the government could probably do a bit more, put more resources into that area um, so people can find them. Um, so yeah, I think it was just a, a mutual passion for wanting to help business owners. It's something that we definitely agree with here on Small Business Matters. There's not enough small business education out there to really push people in the right direction. There's absolutely lots of choices in, in lots of different aspects of even finance or, you know, you know, different software providers. There's lots of options, but you don't know where to look. Do you think that advisors play a really important role in that? Is that why you're also working with advisory groups to help get this message out there? Advisors are crucial. Um, it's as simple as that. 
Um, a business owner is very good at running their business. They're entrepreneurial. They're good at making things, good at selling things, better than most other people out there. But you can't expect them to also be really good at all other aspects of the business, about recruitment law, funding, accounting, tax, etc. And that's where they need the advisors. They need to find a, a trusted advisor. Um, and they've really got to look for those people. And those people have got to look for them as well and be willing to help those people and look for long-term relationships. Don't go in there and say, I can do this for you, but I'm going to charge you an arm and a leg um, because that will put the business owner off. Work with the business owner, grow with the business owner, and then you'll have a sustainable business. That's some great advice from someone who's been there themselves and has grown Scottish Pacific to be one of Australia's most successful finance companies. Um, where do you see this heading? Would you like to see... What, what's your wish list for legislators when it comes around small business finance? Is there anything that you would like to see change? Oh, legislators, I think the only thing is small business owners... I know are scared about employing people because managing staff and exiting staff um, is really, really hard and it can tie them down. Um, that needs to be made easier in terms of legislation. I don't understand the payroll tax, employ more people, pay more tax, but that's another issue. Um, so that's legislation, but I think in, there's easy ways for the government to help small businesses and it's maybe spend some money on advertising about where to go and get help. Um, spend that money there. Um, there's funders out there who can get the funding for these people. There's advisors out there who can do the advising. Just tell people where they've got to go. Spend the money on that. Indeed, otherwise you'll find things like Small Biz Matters trying to fill the gap with uh, <laughs> volunteer hours. Thank you so much for joining us on the program today. It's the Fits Me Essential Guide to Business Funding, Ready, Prep, Go. It's a, an alignment between the Scottish Pacific Business Finance Team and the Australian Small Business and Family Enterprise Ombudsman's Office. Thank you so much for joining us today, Peter. Thank you, absolute pleasure, and thank you for what you're doing for small businesses. You're talking to Small Biz Matters with Alexi Boyd, and we're in the room with Lelette Kaleja from All That Counts. Thank you so much for coming to join us to talk about this awesome uh, new initiative that's being rolled out by Scottish Pacific, Fits Me, Essential Guide to Business Funding. Can you tell me a little bit about where the professionals fit into all of this? Why, are, as a big organisation like Scottish Pacific, partnering with the smaller financial advisors? Hi Alexi, thanks for having me. Look, I think this really suits any business advisor out there working with small business who is at the you know, forefront of helping them establish you know, access to, to funding. Anyone who's responsible for looking at, you know, whether you're an accountant, a BAS agent, bookkeeper, it's really important that we finally have a set of tools available to us that allows us to navigate the, the maze of lending for small business. And when you go through the, the different scenarios that are out there, it is a minefield of what's available to small business. And so for me, as an advisor myself, I think it's going to be one of those essential toolkits that I always, you know, showcase to the clients, especially those that are going through either growth spurt or are just having difficulty because sales have come down or something. So it's, uh, to me, it's pivotal that this tool is something that all of us are using. We're, we're told these days that we need to upskill, we need to be more advice, you know, provide more advice to our clients. Well, this is the way you start because we all know that cash flow is what, you know, brings a business down. So if you want to do something that's going to make a difference for your client, get on board with this and start using it as your conversation starter to help them navigate their way through lending. And how do you see this actually in a practical sense? Do you envisage yourself as a professional taking this um, PDF document or this document itself and showing it to the client and how do they then use it in a practical way? Uh, absolutely. I, I think, you know, what you don't know, you don't know. And our clients, clearly, there are a lot of things out there that they don't know. Nor do they know that there is access to them. I was talking to someone today about, OK, well, I have clients who don't invoice. So what are their options when they want to grow? They're not importing product, but they, they have equipment. They might be a cafe. They may have purchased their equipment outright. So there is probably options there to do some kind of buyback and create a, a chateau mortgage for them to inject money into the business if they can't get 
money from the bank. So there's just so many options and I would think we all, not just our clients need to open their eyes, but we need to open our eyes as to what is available and think outside the square that normal traditional lending with banks is not the only option out there. It sounds to me like this is quite an an important tool, but is it more slanted towards a particular lender or because this is partnering with the Australian Small Business and Family Enterprise Ombudsman, is that a way of making sure that it's keeping everybody equal? We're not not sort of uh, supporting one lender over another with this, are we? Yeah. No, most definitely not. And and that was something that when I was asked to, to be an ambassador for it, I wanted to make sure that it wasn't a Scottish specific uh, push Uh, but clearly you know they've been around for a long time and I remember when I first started uh, working with small business some of my clients were using them as well so it's it's kind of done a 360 for me to be here today because I know what they do and they do a pretty good job as well but Scottish Pacific is not the only um, lender out there. I mean, clearly we all, they do debtor finance, but they also do other forms of finance, which I was speaking to them today. So it was good to know. Uh, but I think it just, like I said, it just really opens your eyes as to what options are available and where you can go. So, you know, some lenders might not lend to a particular industry and that's okay. You've got to go to those lenders that specialise in your industry. Now, you're a BAS agent bookkeeper and one of the things that we are so good at is supporting small business on a day-to-day level to help them understand their finances. There's a section in the back of this which is all about being financially fit. Mm -hmm. Do you think having an advisor like a BAS agent on your side is part of being financially fit? Without a doubt, absolutely. Um, Most of my clients that uh, are successful are those that use our services on a regular basis, not just when it comes to Baz and Lodger Baz. They use our services as their advisor, as someone who can help them see what the numbers mean in their business. And it's not also just about numbers. I have this saying that, you know, a a good Baz agent and a, a good bookkeeper and accountant will add value beyond the numbers. And that's what we need to do. We need to help our clients you know, streamline some of their processes, automate what they can, because lots of the t- lots of times their their profits are, are eaten away by, by wages. Wages that could probably be, you know, cut back if we're looking at, you know, ways they're doing things by implementing, you know, solutions, tech, that kind of stuff, changing the way something is done. Mm. So we need to take it's not a good advisor will look at things not just from a numbers perspective, but but from an operational perspective as well. So it sounds to me like partnering with the right people and the right financial support, as well as understanding what this uh, rollout is for small business in terms of education, it's all part and parcel of being financially fit and being financially aware. How can people find out more about this, uh, this particular rollout? Well, I'm sure that there was lots of media here today, so I'm sure they will be um, out there... um you know, spruiking it. But if you do want to know more, I guess go to the, um, you know, Asbefio. Asbefio. Asbefio, it's a tongue twister, uh, website or Scottish Pacific or, you know, it will be out in the marketplace. Today was its first day where it was launched. So I'm sure everyone will hear about it, you know, in the public domain very shortly. Thanks so much for joining us, Lalette. You're, of course, an ambassador for financial advisors, small business uh, bass agents and all the people that support small business. So thank you for coming on Small Biz Matters with Alexi Boyd.